the revelations of heaven and hell to seven youths. These seven youths were taken by Jesus Christ and shown heaven and hell while they were together as a group. Due to the recording, only six testimonies were recorded. This was originally transcribed from Spanish audio and is now being narrated. The Visit to Hell The First Testimony Luke 16, 19 There was a rich man that dressed in purple and fine linen, who enjoyed luxurious living every day. In front of his gates a beggar named Lazarus was placed, covered with sores and hungering to be fed crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The beggar died and was carried by the angel to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And while suffering torments in Hades, he looked up and from a distance saw Abraham with Lazarus in his bosom. So he called out, Father Abraham, take pity on me and send Lazarus to dip his fingertip in water and cool my tongue, for I am in torment in this fire. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you enjoyed the good things in your lifetime, while Lazarus had the bad things. Now he is being comforted, but you are suffering anguish. Besides that, there is a great chasm fixed between you and us, so that those who want to cross from here to you are unable. Neither can they cross from your side to us. The Bible, the Word of God, is very clear about the subject of heaven and hell. In this portion that we have just read, the Lord tells us about two places, heaven and hell, the condemnation or the salvation. There is no intermediate place. Purgatory does not exist. Limbo does not exist, where men exist for a while after they have departed from the earth and then go to heaven. The Bible is very clear about that. In April 11, 1995, God gave us a revelation that would change the trajectory of our lives. We had just begun to know about God and His Word. We are seven youths to whom God has given the privilege and great responsibility of sharing this revelation with the world. Everything started about approximately 10 a.m. We were praying and were prepared to go out on a picnic later that day. Suddenly, around 10 a.m., a very powerful white light shone through one of the windows. When the light appeared, all of us immediately started to speak in tongues and were baptized with the Holy Ghost. In that moment, all of us were astonished and fascinated by what we saw. That glorious light was illuminating the entire room. The light was much stronger than any light from the sun. In the middle of the light, we saw a host of angels dressed in white. And these angels were so beautiful, tall, and very good-looking. In the middle of all those angels, we saw something amazing, the figure of a man. This image was a special being, a man who was dressed in very white mantle and a robe. His hair was like golden threads, and we could not see his face because he was too brilliant. However, we saw a golden belt around his chest with gold lettering that said, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was wearing pure gold sandals on his feet, and his beauty was without equal. When we saw the presence of that man, all of us fell to our knees. Then we started to hear his voice. It was a very special and wonderful voice. Every word drilled into our hearts like a double-edged sword. Just like it is written in the Word of God, Hebrews 4.12, he spoke to us in very simple but powerful words. We audibly heard him say to us, My little children, do not be afraid. I am Jesus of Nazareth, and I have visited you to show you a mystery, so you can show and tell the towns, nations, cities, churches, and all places. Where I tell you to go, you will go, and where I tell you not to go, you will not go. The Holy Bible, the Word of God, says in Joel 2.28, it shall come to pass that after that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. These are the times that God is preparing for everyone. Then something strange happened. 
a, a, a rock. It, it just appeared in the middle of the room. And the Lord, who was with us, made us get on that rock. The rock was about eight inches above the floor, and a huge hole appeared in the floor. It was a huge, black, terrifying hollow or, or cavern. Soon, we fell on top of the rock and went down through the hollow in the floor. It was dark, and it led us to the center of the earth. While we were in that gloomy darkness, we were so scared. We were so afraid that we said to the Lord, Lord, we don't want to go to that place. Don't, don't take us to that place, Lord. Take us out of here, Lord. The Lord answered us with a very beautiful and compassionate voice. This experience is necessary so you can see and tell others. We were in the middle of a horn-shaped tunnel and we started to see shadows, uh, demons, and, and figures that moved from one place to another. We kept going deeper and deeper down. In just a matter of seconds, we felt an emptiness and a great fear. We then arrived at some caverns, at some horrible doors, uh, like it was like a labyrinth. Now, we didn't want to go inside, and we noticed a terrible smell and a heat that choked us. Once we entered, we saw terrible things, frightful images. The entire place was engulfed in flames, and in the middle of these flames there were bodies of thousands of people, and they were suffering in great torment. The sight was so horrifying, we didn't want to see what was shown to us. The place was divided into different sections of torment and suffering. One of the first sections that the Lord allowed us to see was the Valley of Cauldrons, as we called it. There were millions of cauldrons. The cauldrons were, uh, well, they were inlaid at the level of the ground. And each of them was burning with lava inside. And in, inside each one was a soul of a person who had died and gone to hell. As soon as those souls saw the Lord, they shouted and started to scream, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, give us a chance to get out of this place. Lord, take me out of here. I'll tell the world that this place is real. But the Lord didn't even look at them. There were millions of men, women, and young people in that place. We also saw homosexuals and, and drunkards in torment. We saw all these people shouting in such great torment. It shocked us to see how their bodies were being destroyed. Worms were coming in and out of their empty eye sockets, mouths and ears, and were penetrating the skin throughout all their body. This fulfills the word of God written in the book of Isaiah 66, 24. They shall go forth. They shall gaze upon the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against me. For their worm shall not die, nor shall their fire be quenched. They shall be an abhorrent to all mankind. Also, in Mark 9, 44, it says, Where their worm does not die, and the fire is not put out. We were just horrified at what we were watching. We saw flames about 9 to 12 feet high, and within each flame there was a soul of a person that had died and went to hell. The Lord allowed us to see a man who was inside one of those cauldrons. He was, he was upside down, and the flesh on his face was falling in pieces. He remained watching the Lord intently, and then shouted and started to call on the name of Jesus. He said, Lord, have mercy! Lord, give me a chance! Lord, take me out of this place! But the Lord Jesus didn't even want to look at him. Jesus simply turned his back on him. When Jesus did this, the man started to curse and blaspheme the Lord. Oh, this man was John Lennon, the member of the satanic music group, the Beatles. John Lennon was a man who mocked and made fun of the Lord during his life. He said that Christianity was going to disappear and Jesus Christ would be forgotten by everyone. However, today this man is in hell and Jesus Christ is alive. Christianity hasn't disappeared either. As we started to walk on the edges of that place, the souls extended their hands to us and begged for mercy. They asked Jesus to take them out of there, but the Lord would not even look at them. 
Then we started to go through different sections. We came to the most terrible section of hell, where the worst torments happen, the center of hell, the most concentrated form of torment, such torments that a human being could never express them. The only people here were those who knew Jesus and the Word of God. There were pastors, evangelists, missionaries, and all types of people that had once accepted Jesus and knew the truth, but lived a double life. There were also backsliders. Their suffering was a thousand times worse than anyone else. They were shouting and begging the Lord for mercy. But the word of the Lord says in the book of Hebrews 10, 26 through 27, For if we continue on sinning willfully after acquiring the knowledge of the truth, then there is no longer left any sacrifice for our sins, but some dreadful anticipation of judgment and of a fierce fire that is to devour those who oppose God. Those souls were there because they preached, they fasted, they sung and lifted their hands in the church. But in the streets and the homes, they were in adultery, fornication, lying, a robbery. We cannot lie to God. The Bible says that he whom much has been given, much will be required. Luke twelve forty eight. God then allowed us to see two women that had once been Christian sisters while on the earth. But they didn't live a righteous life before the Lord. One said to the other, You cursed wretch! It's your fault that I'm in this place. You didn't preach to me a holy gospel. And because you didn't tell me about the truth, I'm now here in hell. They would say these things to each other in the midst of the flames. And they hated each other because there is no love, mercy, or forgiveness in hell. There were thousands of souls who had known the word of God but their lives weren't clean before the holy presence of the Lord. You cannot play with God or with the flames of hell either, the Lord said. He also told us, My sons, all of the suffering on the earth concentrated in just one place is nothing, nothing compared with the suffering that a person has in the best parts of hell. If it is this terrible for those who suffer least in hell, how much worse must it be for those in the center of hell who once knew the word of the Lord and walked away from it? Then the Lord told us that we could play with fire on earth, but never with the fire in hell. We continued walking through different places, and the Lord showed us many different people. We could see that all the people had approximately six different types of torments. There were souls tormented by demons with all types of punishments. Another terrible punishment was their own conscience saying, Remember when they preached to you? Remember when you heard the word of God? Remember when they told you about hell and you laughed at it? Their own conscience tormented them, just like the worms that crossed all over their bodies, like the consuming fire that was a thousand, thousands times more hotter than we know. This was the reward that the devil has for all those who seek him and follow him. The word of the Lord says in Revelations 21.8, As for the cowardly, however, and the unbelieving, and the fearful, the murderers, the immoral, those practicing magic arts, and idolaters, and all liars, their lot is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This is the second death. Next, the Lord showed us a man that had murdered six people. And these six peoples now surrounded him. And they were shouting at him, saying, It's your fault. We're in this place. Your fault. The murderer tried to cover his ears because he didn't want to listen to them. But he could not avoid listening, since in hell, all your senses are much more sensitive. Souls in that place were tormented with an intolerable thirst for water that cannot be satisfied in any way. Like the Bible story of Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man in hell wanted one single drop of water. That would have been enough. The word of the Lord says in Isaiah 34, 9, The streams of Edom shall be turned into pitch 
and her soil into brimstone. Her land shall become burning pitch. In that place, every soul was in the middle of fire. People saw mirages of, of crystal clear rivers in the middle of the fire. But when they tried to reach them, the rivers turned into fire. And they also saw trees with fruit that gave out water. But when they tried to take them, they burned their hands and the demons would ridicule them. Then God took us to a place much worse than the other places that we had seen. We saw the lake of fire and brimstone. On one side of the lake, there was a smaller lake. And in that smaller lake, there were millions, millions, millions of souls crying and begging the Lord to have mercy on them. And they said to the Lord, Lord, please take us out of here at least just for a moment. Please give us the chance to get out. However, the Lord could not do anything for them because their judgment was already set. Among those millions and millions of people, the Lord allowed us to focus on one man whose body was halfway submerged in the lake of fire. The Lord let us understand and know his thoughts. The name of that man was Mark, and we were amazed by the things this man said to himself in his thoughts. We learned an eternal lesson when we heard the following thoughts. I, I would give anything to be in your place now. I would give anything to go back to the earth just for a minute. I wouldn't care if I was the most miserable, most sick, most hated, and the poorest man in the world. I would give anything to go back just for one minute on the earth. The Lord Jesus was holding my hand. Jesus replied to Mark's thoughts and said, Mark, why would you like to come back to the earth even for just one single minute? With a crying and tormented voice, he told Jesus, Lord, I'd give anything to go back to the earth just for a single minute, simply to repent and be saved. When the Lord heard what Mark had said, I saw blood come from Jesus' wounds. And tears filled his eyes, and he said, Mark, it is too late for you. Worms are set for your bed, and worms will cover you. Isaiah 14, 11. When the Lord said this to him, he sank into the lake forever. Sadly, all those souls have no more hope. Only we on earth have a chance to repent today and go to heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ. I now leave you with my sister, to continue this testimony. Thank you. The Second Testimony by Lupe God bless you, dear beloved brothers. Let's read the word of the Lord from Psalms 18.9. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. When the Lord reached for my hand, I grabbed his hand and we started to descend down that tunnel. The tunnel grew darker and darker to the point where I could not even see my other hand that wasn't holding on to the Lord's hand. Suddenly, we passed something dark and, and sparkling, which was making noise. The darkness was so dense, your hand could not even find the walls of the tunnel. And our descent was so fast that I felt like my soul was separating from my body. Soon I noticed a very rotten smell. Like, uh, like the smell of rotten flesh. And it was getting much worse each moment. Then I heard the voices of, of millions and millions of souls, and they were endlessly shouting and crying out and moaning. I was so frightened that I turned to the Lord and said, Lord, where are you taking me? Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. The Lord only said, It is necessary that you see this so you can tell everybody else. We continued down through this horn-shaped tunnel until we arrived at a place that was entirely dark. But like pulling a heavy curtain from my eyes, I then saw millions and millions of flames. Even worse, I heard these agonizing screams but couldn't see anyone. I was really scared, and I said to the Lord, Oh, please, Lord, have mercy on me. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Don't take me to this place. Forgive me. At this time, I didn't think that I was just a spectator in hell. I thought it was the day of reckoning. Standing before the Lord Jesus, I was shaking violently because I really thought that this was the end of my life. 
we drew closer to a big flame ahead of us. It was huge and, and burning with fury. I continued going down slowly, seeing multitudes of flames and hearing millions of souls crying with one voice. Then I, then I saw a wooden table, and, and this table was not being consumed by the fire. It had what appeared to be bottles on it, beer bottles. And these looked refreshing, but they were full of fire. And as I was looking at this, a man suddenly appeared. His flesh was almost completely destroyed, and what was left of his clothes were muddy and burning. He had lost his eyes, his mouth, and all of his hair from the fire. He could see me, even though he had no eyes. I, I tell you, it's the soul of a person that thinks, reasons, and truly sees, not your natural body. This man extended his skinny hands towards the Lord and started to cry out. And he said, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I'm in pain. I'm in burning. Please have mercy and take me out of this place. The Lord looked at him with pity, and I started to feel something warm in my hand. I looked, and it was the blood, the, the blood of Jesus. The Lord's blood came from his hand while he was watching the suffering this man engulfed in flames. Then the man turned his gaze in the direction of the table and walked towards the bottles. He grabbed a bottle, but as he was about to drink from it, fire and smoke shot out of the bottle. He put his head back and he screamed like I had never heard before. He cried with such great pain and sorrow and then started to drink what was in the bottle. But the bottle was full of acid and his throat was totally destroyed by it. You could see the acid passing through his stomach and hurting him. The number 666 was engraved on his forehead. And on his chest was a plate made of some unknown metal which couldn't be destroyed, not even by the heat or the worms. It had some letters written on it, but we could not understand them. The Lord, in his great mercy, gave us an interpretation of what was written. I am here because I am a drunkard. He begged the Lord for mercy. But the word of God is very clear when it tells us in 1 Corinthians 6.10. Thieves, greedy people, drunks, slanderers, and robbers will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Lord showed me this man's last moments on earth, just like a movie or a film. It was like a big television screen showing me his last seconds before death. The man's name was Luis, and he was in the bar drinking. I saw the same table and the same bottles in that bar. Around this table were his friends. <laughs> I, I can tell you this now. There is only one true friend, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the faithful friend. Luis was drinking, and his friends were already drunk. His best friend took a bottle, broke it, and started stabbing Luis. When he saw Luis lying on the floor, he ran away. But Luis bled to death on the floor. And the saddest thing was that he died without the Lord. In the middle of all this, all those souls in hell were crying out. And I asked the Lord, Oh Lord, please tell me, did, did this man know about you? Did he know about your salvation? The Lord sadly replied, Yes, Lupe, he knew about me. He accepted me as his personal Savior, but he did not serve me. Then I felt even more fear. Luis cried louder and shouted, Lord, this hurts! It hurts! Please have mercy on me! He extended his hand again towards the Lord, but Jesus took my hand instead, and we walked away from the flame. The flames consuming Luis became more violent, and he cried louder, Have mercy on me! Have mercy on me! He was then lost in the flames. We continued walking, and this place was just so huge and scary. We approached another flame, and I said to the Lord, Lord, no, please, I don't want to see any more of this. I beg you, forgive me. Please forgive me. I don't want to see this. So I closed my eyes. But it didn't matter. Open or closed, I still saw everything. 
this flame started to go down slowly and then began to see a woman. And she was covered with mud and the mud was full of worms. She had very few hairs left and she was caked with worm-infested mud. She was consumed by worms all around her body and she shouted, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me and forgive me. Look at me. This hurts. Have mercy on me. Take away these worms. Take me out of this torment because it hurts so much. The Lord simply looked at her with great sorrow. As we held his hand, we could feel the pain and the sorrow in the Lord's heart for all the lost souls eternally burning in the flames of hell. This woman had no eyes or, or lips, but she could still see and feel, and all the pain was just stronger. She had a bottle in her hands, uh, and it was full of acid, but uh, she believed it was perfume. I could see that it was acid, and every time she sprayed her body, it burned her. Nevertheless, she still kept applying this acid all over her body, over and over. She kept saying that it was an expensive perfume. She also believed that she was wearing a beautiful necklace. But all I saw were serpents wrapped around her neck. And she believed that she was wearing very expensive bracelets. But I saw they were actually worms, about a foot long, furiously digging into her bones. And she said that her jewelry was all that she had. But I saw scorpions and worms all over her body. And she had a metal plate that everyone wears in hell. And it read, I am here for robbery. This woman had no remorse for her sin. The Lord asked her, Magdalena, why are you in this place? She answered, It didn't bother me to steal from others. The only thing I cared about was having my jewelry and getting more expensive perfumes. I didn't care who I robbed, as long as I looked good. I held onto Christ's hand as I saw the worms burrow through her entire body. Magdalena turned around, looking for something, and I asked the Lord once more, Lord, did this person know about you? And the Lord answered, Yes, this person knew me. Magdalena started to look around, saying, Lord, where is that woman who talked to me about you? Where is she? I have been in hell for 15 years. All the people in hell can remember everything. Magdalena kept asking, Where is this woman? I, I can't see her. I knew her body could not turn around because her flesh remained in the same position. She tried to turn and look into other flames to find that woman who talked to her about God. The Lord replied, No, no, Magdalena, she is not here. That woman who told you about me is with me in the kingdom of heaven. Upon hearing this, she threw herself down into the flames, which burned her even more. Her metal plate condemned her as a thief. I want to read in the word of God, in Isaiah 3.24, it shall be that instead of a sweet smell, there will be rottenness. Instead of a girdle, a rope. Instead of a well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, a wrapping of sackcloth. Instead of beauty, a branding mark. As we continued walking with the Lord, I saw a very big column filled with worms. Around it was a slide made of red-hot metal, on this column, there was a brightly lit billboard that could be seen from anywhere. The billboard read, Welcome, all liars and gossipers. At the end of the slide was a small boiling lagoon. It looked like uh, burning brimstone. And, and then I saw a totally naked person coming down the slide. And as they slid, their skin would peel off and stick to the slide. When they fell into the burning lagoon, their tongues expanded until they exploded and worms appeared in the place of the tongue. This began their torment. The word of God says in Psalms 73, 18 through 19, 
Surely you did set them in slippery places. You cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. After seeing this, we were taken back out of hell. And I just want to tell you that heaven and hell are even more real than this physical world that we know. It is here where you decide what direction you want to go to spend eternity with Jesus or to a burning hell. The Lord kept saying to us, Without holiness, no man will see me. Without holiness, no man will see me. Hebrews 12, 14. That is why I tell you the same thing now. Without holiness, you cannot see the Lord. The third testimony is done by Sandra. Let's go to the word of the Lord in Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Whenever a soul arrives in hell, that person acquires a body of death. The Lord Jesus took my hand, and we began to go downwards through a very deep, dark tunnel that led to the center of the earth. We arrived at a place with several doors, and one of them opened, and we entered with the Lord. I would not let go of the Lord's hand, because I knew if I did, I would stay in hell forever. Upon entering that door, the first thing I saw was an enormous wall. There were thousands of people hung from their heads by hooks. With, they, had, they had shackles that bound their hands to the wall. We also saw many thousands of people standing in the midst of flames everywhere. We went in front of one of those flames, and it started to go down slowly. Soon I could see a person inside, and when he spoke, I could tell it was a man. The man was wearing a priest's garment, which was totally filthy and shredded. Worms were slithering inside and out all over this man's body. He looked charred and burnt from the fire. His eyes were plucked out, and his flesh was just melting and falling to the ground. But after the flesh would fall off, he would grow back and the whole process would resume. When he saw Jesus, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Please let me out of here just for a moment, just a minute. On this man's chest was a metal plate that said, I am here for robbery. When Jesus came close, he asked the man, What is your name? The man answered, Andrew. My name is Andrew, Lord. The Lord asked him, How long have you been here? Andrew answered, I have been here for a very long time. The man began to tell his story. He said he had the responsibility of collecting tithes and organizing monetary distribution to the poor in his Catholic church. However, he would steal the money instead. With eyes full of compassion, the Lord asked the man, Andrew, have you ever heard the gospel? Andrew replied, Yes, Lord. There was one Christian woman that went to the church and she preached the gospel once. But I didn't want to accept it. I didn't want to believe it. But I believe it now. Now I believe that this is real. Please, Lord, take me out of here at least just a moment. As he was speaking, worms were crawling inside his eye sockets, exiting his ears and, and coming inside again through his mouth. He tried to pull them off with his hands, but it was impossible. He was shouting horribly and kept begging God for mercy. He kept asking Jesus to take him out of that place. Even worse, there were demons tormenting him, constantly piercing him with their spears. The demons, well, they look just like one of the toy dolls that we have here on earth, called the Jordanos. I saw those dolls in hell. But they were not dolls anymore. They were alive and demonic. They were about three feet tall and had very sharp teeth, their blood came out of their mouths, and their eyes were completely red. They were stabbing Andrew with all their might, as well as all those who were in these parts of hell. When I observed this, I asked the Lord how it was possible for a doll on earth to look exactly like that demon. 
the Lord told me that those were spirits of sadness. As we continued, we saw thousands of people in torment. Whenever a soul saw the Lord, they tried to reach him with their, with their skinny hands. I, I noticed a woman, and, and she started to shout when she saw Jesus. She screamed, Lord, please have mercy on me. Take me out of this place. And she was suffering a lot, and she extended her arms towards the Lord. She kept begging him to take her out of that place just for one second. She was totally naked and, and covered with mud. Her hair was all dirty, and worms were slithering up and down her body. And she tried to take them off with her hands, but every time she scraped some away, they multiplied even more. The worms were about six to eight inches long. The word of the Lord says in Mark 9, 44, where the worm never ceases and the fire is not put out. It, it was so terrible seeing this woman and hearing her cries as the worms ferociously ate her flesh. There was a metal plate embedded in her chest that could not be destroyed by the flames. It read, I am here for fornication. In the same manner of her sin, ugh, this woman was forced to fornicate in hell with a very disgusting and fat snake. Uh, the snake had huge thorns in its, around its body, about six or eight inches long. The snake would penetrate her private parts and travel up her body to her throat. And when the snake entered her, she started to scream, and she begged the Lord more intensely to take her out of that place. Lord, I am here for fornication. I have been here for seven years since I died of AIDS. I had six lovers, and I am here for fornication. In hell, she had to repeat her sin over and over. And she had no rest day or night, suffering the same way all the time. She tried to extend her hands towards the Lord, but the Lord just told her, Blanca, it is too late for you. Worms Worm shall be your bed and worms shall cover you. When the Lord said those words, a blanket of fire covered her, and I could no longer see her. We continued walking, seeing thousands and thousands of people. There were young people, adults, and elderly people suffering in torment. We arrived in a place that looked like a big swimming pool of fire, with thousands of men and women inside of it. Each of them had a metal plate on their chest that read, I am here for not giving tithes and offerings. Well, when I read that, I asked the Lord, Lord, how can this be possible? That these people are here for this reason? The Lord responded, Yes, because these people taught that tithes and offerings were not important when my word shows it is a command. In Malachi 3, 8 through 9, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. The Lord told me that when his people withhold their tithes, it hinders the work of the Lord, and the gospel is then not preached. People in this place suffered a thousand times worse than others, because they knew the word of the Lord and disobeyed. We continued walking, and the Lord showed me a man. I could see from his waist to his head, and I started to have a vision of how he died. His name was Rogalio, and he was in a car while a person got close to preach the gospel to him and gave him a Bible. But Rogalio ignored that person's warning and continued on his way, without knowing that a few minutes later his car would crash. It fell into a precipice, and he soon died. The moment he crashed, the Bible opened to Revelations 21.8. As for the cowardly, however, and the unbelieving, and the depraved, the murderers, the immoral, those practicing magic arts, and idolaters, and all liars, their lot is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This is the second death. When Orgalio read this verse, he died and arrived in hell. He had only been there one month and still had some of the flesh on his face. However, he was suffering like everyone else. At first, 
He did not know why he was in hell. I think that when the Christian got close to his car, it was the only and last chance for him to accept the Lord Jesus. The same way that many had the opportunity to accept him. Today, I invite you to open your heart to Jesus. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Only through him can we be saved into the kingdom of heaven. The Lord also asks us to follow his ways in holiness and honor. And God bless you. The fourth testimony. God bless you, brothers. When the Lord took my hand, I could see that I was standing on a rock. And behind us, I saw an angel. We began to go down through a tunnel with incredible speed. Now, quickly, I turned and saw that the angel was gone. And I felt so afraid. I asked the Lord, Lord, where is the angel? Why is he not here anymore? The Lord said, He cannot go where we are about to go. We continued downward and then stopped abruptly uh, like an elevator. And I saw several tunnels. And we went through one, the one that my sister Sanders spoke about. The tunnel where people were hanging off of hooks by their heads with shackles on their wrists. The wall that had people on it seemed infinitely long. Millions of people were hanging on it. They had worms all over their bodies. I looked ahead and saw that there was another wall, exactly the same as the other. I said to the Lord, Lord, there are so many people in this place. Instantly, a scripture verse entered my mind, one that I did not recognize. The Lord told me, Hell and Sheol are always hungry. Proverbs 27, 20. We left there and soon arrived at a place we called the Valley of the Cauldrons. These cauldrons were full of boiling mud, and we got close to one of them. The first person that I saw was a woman. Her body floated and sank with the boiling mud. But when the Lord looked at her, she stopped moving and remained suspended in the mud at waist level. The Lord asked, Woman, what is your name? She answered, My name is Rubiella. Her hair was full of boiling mud, and flesh hung from her bones, which were charred black from the fire. Worms entered through the holes of her eyes, and came out her mouth, and entered again through her nose, and exited the ears. Ugh. When these worms could not enter, they simply made holes to enter the other parts of the body, which caused indescribable pain. She shouted, Lord, please take me out of this place. Have mercy on me. I cannot continue like this any longer. Make it stop, Lord. I cannot stand it anymore. Please have mercy on me. The Lord asked her why she was there. And she said she was there because of vanity, which was the same word written on the metal plate on her chest. In her hand was a normal-looking bottle. But to her it appeared to be a very expensive perfume. <gasps> Rubiella had to take the bottle which was full of acid, and spread all over her body. Well, this caused all the flesh that was sprayed to melt, causing her great pain. And she shouted to the Lord, Lord, please have mercy on me. I cannot be here any longer, just a single second, Lord. I am not saying that it's a sin to use perfume, but the Lord told us that the woman was there because of her perfume, as the word of the Lord tells in Deuteronomy 5, 7. You shall have no other gods before me. She was there because of her beauty, perfumes, and vanity, and they were first place in her life. However, the Lord Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He has to be first place in your life. That is why she was there. With sadness, the Lord looked at her and said, Rubiella, it is too late for you. Worms shall be your bed, and worms shall cover you. When the Lord said that, a blanket of fire totally covered her. While her body was being consumed inside the cauldron, she suffered horrible pain. We then got far away from there and arrived at a place with giant doors. And as we approached them, they opened for us. On the other side, we saw a giant cavern. And as I looked up, I saw different colored lights were moving like a cloud of smoke. And suddenly, we heard music. Uh, salsa, balanetto, 
uh, rock and different kinds of popular music that people hear on the radio. The Lord made a movement with his hand and we saw millions and millions of people hung up with chains in their hands. They were jumping wildly over the fire. The Lord looked at us and said, Look, these are the wages for the dancers. They had to jump wildly up and down to the beat of the music. If salsa were playing, they had to jump to that beat. If any other kind of music was playing, they had to jump to that beat. They could never stop jumping. But worse, worse than that, they had shoes that had six-inch spikes on the bottom. Whenever they jumped, it would pierce their feet, and they never had a moment's rest. When someone would try to stop, demons would come at once and stab them with spears, curse them and saying, Praise him! This is your kingdom now! Praise Satan! Praise him! You can't stop! Praise him! Praise him! You have to praise him! You have to jump! You have to dance! You cannot stop for one single second! It was terrible that many of the people were Christians who knew the Lord, but they were in nightclubs when they died. Now maybe you're asking, well, where does it say in the Bible that it's wrong to dance? In James 4.4, 4, the Word of God says, Do you not realize, you adulteresses, that friendship with the world is enmity towards God? Therefore, whoever determines to be a friend of the world becomes God's enemy. Also, in 1 John 2, 15 through 7. Neither love the world nor things in the world. Whoever loves the world has not the Father's love in his heart, because everything in the world, the passions of the flesh, the desires of the eye, and the proud display of life have their origin not from the Father, but from the world. And the world with its lusts passes away, but he who does the will of God remains forever. Remember, the world will pass away. All this will perish, but the one who does the will of God stands forever. My friends and brothers, when we left this place, we saw something like bridges that divided hell into different sections of torment. We saw a spirit walking over a footbridge, and it looked like a doll that we had seen on the earth. We call them treasure trolls. They have different color hair with an old man's face but a kid's body, and, and no sexual parts. Their eyes are full of evil. The Lord explained that those spirits were spirits of loss. This spirit had a spear in his hand and was walking pompously on the footbridge, like a, like a queen or, or like a pretty runaway model. And as he walked, he stabbed people below with his spear. He would curse them and say, Remember the day you were outside a Christian church and you didn't want to come in? Remember the day they preached to you and you didn't want to listen? Remember the day they gave you a gospel track and you threw it away? The lost souls would try to cover the area where they used to have ears. And they would reply to the demon, Shut up! Shut up! Don't tell me anymore! I don't want to know more! Shut up! However, the evil spirit enjoyed doing that because of the pain it inflicted on the souls. We continued walking with the Lord. Upon looking at a mass of people, we noticed one man was shouting louder than the others who were burning there. He was saying, Father, Father, have mercy on me! Jesus was not going to stop and look at this man. But when Jesus heard the words, Father, he shook and turned around. Jesus looked at him and told him, Father, you call me Father? No, I am not your Father, and neither are you my Son. If you were my Son, you would now be with me in the kingdom of heaven. You are the sons of your Father, the devil. Immediately, a blanket of fire came up and totally covered his body. The Lord told us the story of this man's life. The man called him Father because he had known him. He used to go to church and listened to God through his word. And he had received many promises of God. So we asked, well, What happened, Lord? Well, why is he here then? The Lord replied, He was living a double life. He lived one way at home, and another at church. He thought in his heart, Well, there is no one that lives close to me, not the pastor, 
or any of the brothers, so I can do whatever I want. But he forgot that the eyes of the Lord are set on all our ways, and no one can lie or hide from the Lord. The word of the Lord tells us, Don't lie to yourselves. God cannot be deceived, because everything a man sows, the same will he harvest. This man was suffering a thousand times worse than others. He was paying a double condemnation, one for his sins and one for thinking he could deceive the Lord. Today, people try to rank the gravity of sins. They think that homosexuals, thieves, and murderers are the greatest sinners, greater than the liars and the gossips. But in the eyes of the Lord, all these sins have the same weight and all the same pay. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. The soul that sins will die. My friends and brothers, I invite you now to accept Jesus' invitation. Jesus is extending his hand of mercy to you if you repent. The word of the Lord tells us that the one who changes his ways and repents will be shown mercy. And it is much better to believe now than to wait and find out the hard way later. God bless you. The Fifth Testimony The Word of God tells us in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we went down there, I, I felt the pain and experience of being dead. I was very frightened by what I saw. I realized that there were many, many people there. All were shouting and crying out. And it was total darkness. But with the presence of the Lord, the darkness disappeared. We saw thousands and thousands of souls all crying out for help and mercy. They cried out to the Lord to take them out of that place. We also felt a great pain because we knew the Lord suffered tremendously whenever he saw them. Many cried out to the Lord to take them out just for a minute, just for a second. And the Lord would ask them, Why do you want to go out? And they would answer, Because I want to be saved. I want to repent and be saved. However, it was too late for them. Dear people that are listening to me now, now is the only opportunity to choose our eternal destination. You can either choose an eternal place of salvation or an eternal place of condemnation. We went down further, and I saw that the floor we were walking on was being destroyed by fire. Mud and flames were coming out of it, and there was also a terrible smell. We felt so upset and nauseous from the smell and the shouts of all the people. We saw a man far away who was waist-deep in burning mud, and whenever he took out his arms, the flesh from his bones would fall off into the mud. We could see a gray mist inside his skeleton. So we asked the Lord what it was. And this type of mist, it was, it was in every person in hell. The Lord told us that it was their souls trapped inside a sin body. Like it is written in Revelations 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest, day or night, those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. We began to understand many things that we had been ignoring on earth. Most importantly, the clearest message was that our lives on earth determined where we would spend eternity. As we walked hand in hand with the Lord, we realized that hell had different, many different places with various levels of torment. We came to a place with many cells which contained tormented souls. The souls would be tormented by many types of demons. The demons would curse the souls, saying, You cursed wretch! Pray Satan! Serve him like you did when you were on earth! The souls suffered terribly from the worms, and the fire was like acid all over their body. We saw two men inside of one prison cell, each had daggers in their hands and were stabbing each other. They would say to each other, You cursed wretch, it's because of you that I'm here. You made me come here because you blinded me to the truth and didn't let me recognize the Lord. 
you didn't let me receive him. Many times I had the chance and you didn't let me accept him. That's why I'm here, tormented day and night. Through a vision, the Lord showed us their lives on earth. We saw them in a bar together. An argument started which led to a fight, and they were already drunk. One of them took a broken bottle, and the other one pulled out a knife. They fought until each one was mortally wounded and died. The two men were doomed to repeat that scenario forever. They were also tormented by the memory that they had been best friends on the earth, like brothers in love for each other. I want to tell you today that there is just one real friend, and his name is Jesus of Nazareth. He is the real friend. He is the faithful friend who is with you at every moment. But as we continued walking, we saw a woman inside of another cell, and she was rolling over in the mud. Her hair was all messed up and, and full of mud. Inside the same cell was, uh, was a big fat snake. And it moved close to her and it surrounded her body. And it went inside of her, uh, starting with the lower parts. She was forced to have sexual contact with that snake. Oh, and in that place, all the men and women who had lived lives of fornication were forced to repeat it there. However, they had to do it with snakes uh, covered with six-inch spikes. The snake destroyed her body every time it went inside of her, and she cried out to the Lord and asked him to stop it. She did not want to suffer any more. Make it stop! I won't do it again! Please make it stop! She begged the Lord as the snake came inside of her and destroyed her body over and over again. We tried to cover our ears to her cries, but we could still hear her. We tried even harder to cover our ears, but that didn't help. We said to the Lord, Lord, please, we don't want to see and hear this anymore, please. And the Lord said, It is necessary that you see this, so you can tell the rest, because my people are being destroyed. My people are ignoring the true salvation, the true road to salvation. We continued walking, and we saw a giant lake with thousands and thousands of people in the midst of flames. And they waved their hands asking for help. But there were many demons flying over that place. And these demons used spears uh, with S-curved spearheads to hurt all the people burning in that lake. The demons mocked and, and cursed the people, saying, You cursed wretch! Now you must worship Satan! Praise him! Praise him as you did when you were on earth. There were thousands and thousands of people, and we were so scared. We felt that if we did not hold on to the Lord's hand, we would be left in that horrifying place. And we were terrified from the things we were feeling. In the distance, we saw a man standing up. And he was in great pain and agony, and he had two demons flying over him, tormenting him. They would dig their spears inside his body and take out his ribs. They also made fun of him all the time. Even further, the Lord showed me that he was tormented from always worrying about his family that he had left on the earth. The man didn't want his family to arrive in the same place of torment. He was worried because he never gave them the message of salvation. He was tormented because he remembered that they once had the chance to receive this message. He was a very important person to give this message to his family, but he preferred to ignore it. And now he was worried about his sons and his wife. The torments continued as the demons cut off his arms. He fell into the burning mud, and because of all the pain of the burning mud, he, he wiggled like a worm from one place to another. His flesh would just fall from his bones because of the heat. He then started to slither like a snake, uh, trying to get out of there, but every time he tried to go, the demons pushed him back, and he went deeper inside the mud. We then saw a number of demons in one place, and something caught my attention. I noticed that one of the demons was missing a wing. And I asked the Lord, Lord, why is this demon missing one wing? And the Lord said, That demon was sent up to the earth with one purpose, but he did not accomplish his task, and he was cast back to hell by one of the servants of God. 
Then Satan came and punished him and cut off one of his wings. Then we understood that as Christians, we have all authority and power in the name of Jesus to cast out all demons and principalities. Dear friends that are listening to these words right now, this testimony, it's not for condemnation, but for salvation. So you can test yourself and see the condition of your heart before the Lord. This is so that you can change your ways for salvation and not for condemnation. Right now, lift up your heart before the Lord and confess your sins. So if the Lord came at this moment, you could go with him instead of going to that place of torment where there is crying and gnashing of teeth. There, you will really understand why Jesus paid such a high price at Calvary's cross. We saw many people in hell who were ignorant of why they were there. Their lives were full of activities that they didn't think were sins. Dear friends, test yourself. Do not think that lying, stealing, being vain are okay things to do. These are all sins before the eyes of the Lord. Dear brothers, turn away and stop doing these things. I'm giving you this message so you can stop willfully sinning and look even more to the face of the Lord. The Sixth Testimony Psalms 62, 12 And thee, O Lord, belongs covenant love, for thou rewardest every man according to his work. On the morning the Lord visited us in that room, he took us by the hand and we started to go down. My heart was totally full of fear. I can't even describe it. I just knew that I could not loosen the hand of my Savior. I felt that Jesus was my life and my light and all my hope was in him. Otherwise, I would be left behind in that place. I never thought I'd ever go to that place. I didn't even believe such a place existed. Even as a Christian, I had always thought that purgatory was hell. But God showed me the reality of hell. When we arrived in hell, I felt the place shook and all the demons ran to hide because not one of them could endure the presence of the Lord. We heard the captive souls shout louder, even louder, because they knew that Jesus of Nazareth was there. They all knew that there was just one person that could possibly get them out, and they had that hope, even though it was a false hope. We walked hand in hand with Jesus and arrived at the section of fornication. Jesus turned to look at a woman who was totally covered with fire. When Jesus saw her, she started to go out slowly from the fire, although her sufferings never stopped. We could see she was totally naked and saw all of her physical characteristics. And her body was totally dirty and she stunk. Her hair was all messed up and she had a yellowish green mud on her. She had no eyes, and her lips were falling into pieces. And she had no ears, just, just the holes. With her hands, which were bones charred black, she took the flesh that was falling from her face and tried to put it back on. But this gave her even worse pain. She then shook and shouted even more. Her shouts never ended. She was full of worms, and, and there was a serpent wrapped around her arm. It was very thick and had thorns around its body. And she had the number 666 engraved on her body, the number of the beast mentioned in the book of Revelations, Revelations 4, 9. She also had a metal plate embedded on her chest, made from some unknown metal, and it was never consumed by the fire. On the plate was something written in a strange language, but we could understand what was written on it. It read, I am here because of fornication. When Jesus saw her, he asked her, Elena, why are you in this place? While Elena was answering the Lord, her body twisted with the pains from her torment. She said that she was there because of fornication. And she asked the Lord for forgiveness over and over again. And then we started to see the events of her death. When she died, she was having sex with one of her lovers because she thought that the person she was living with was gone on a trip. However, 
he came back from his job and found her in bed with someone else. He then went to the kitchen and took a big knife and stuck it in Elena's back. She died and was taken to hell, exactly the way she died, totally naked. In hell, everything materialized, and she still had that big knife stuck in her back, causing her great pain. And by this time, she had already been in hell for seven years, and she could remember every moment of her life and death. She also remembered when someone tried to preach to her about Jesus, that he was the only one who could save her. But now it is too late for her and everyone else in hell. The word of the Lord talks a lot about fornication, and it is very clear. Fornication is having sexual relationships outside of marriage. 1 Corinthians 6.13 Food for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy both of them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Also, in 1 Corinthians 6.18 Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. When Jesus finished talking with her, she was covered with a big blanket of fire, and we could no longer see her, but we heard the sound of her flesh burning and those horrifying screams. I can't even describe them with words. As we continued to walk with the Lord, he showed us all the people there, the, the idol worshipers, those who used and practiced witchcraft, the immoral, uh, adulterers, liars, and homosexuals. We were very scared. The only thing we wanted to do was leave. But Jesus kept saying that it was necessary to look so that we could tell others so they might believe. We continued with Jesus, holding his hand even tighter, and we came to a section that really made an impression on me. We saw a young man, 23 years old, and he was suspended waist high in the middle of a flame. And we couldn't see exactly what his torment was, but the number 666 was engraved on him. He also had a metal plate on his chest that read, I am here for being normal. When he saw Jesus, he extended his hands toward Jesus, begging for mercy. The Word of God says in Proverbs 14.12, There is a way that seems right to a person, but in the end is the way of death. When we read the plate that said, I am here for being normal, we asked the Lord, Lord, how come? Is this possible that a person can come to this place for this reason? Then Jesus asked him, Andrew, why are you here in this place? He answered, Jesus, when I was on earth, I thought that just killing and stealing were sins, and that is why I never tried to get close to you. In Psalms 9.17, it says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, all the heathen that forget God. Andrew made a big mistake by classifying sins, like many people do today. The Bible is very clear when it says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 6.23 Further, when the Bible talks about sins, it never classifies sins because all of them are just sins. Andrew had the opportunity, the chance to accept Jesus. But he didn't take the opportunity that God had given to him. Maybe he had a thousand opportunities to know the Lord. But he never wanted to know him. And that was the reason he was there. Then a big blanket of fire covered his body, and we never saw him again. We continued walking with Jesus. In the distance, we saw something falling down, like chunks of material. And when we got closer, we saw that it was people that were falling into hell at that moment. People that had just died on the earth without having accepted Jesus in their hearts. They were arriving in hell. We saw a young man, and, and many demons ran towards him and began to destroy his body. Immediately his body began to fill with worms, and he shouted, No! What is this? Stop! 
I don't want to be in this place. Stop it. This must be a dream. Take me out of this place. He didn't even know that he was dead and that he died without Jesus in his heart. The demons were making fun of him and always tormenting his body. Then the number 666 appeared on his forehead and a metal plate on his chest. Even if we couldn't see the reason he came to hell, we knew for sure that he would never get out again. The Lord told us that the torments of all these people in hell would be even stronger on the day of judgment. If they are suffering in such torment and horrifying ways now, I can't imagine how they will suffer after the day of judgment. We didn't see any children there. We just saw thousands and thousands of young people, men and women of many nationalities. Nevertheless, in hell, there are no more nationalities or social levels. All come to be tormented and punished. There was one thing that everyone wanted, and that was a chance to get out, and just for a second. They also wanted to have one drop of water to refresh their tongues, like the story of the rich man in the Bible. But this wasn't possible anymore. They chose where they wanted to spend their eternity. They decided to spend it without God. God never sends anyone to hell. Everyone arrives there according to their own acts. In Galatians 6, 7, it says, Make no mistake, God is not mocked. What a person sows, he will reap. Today, you have the great opportunity to change your eternal destiny. Jesus is still available now, and the Bible says that while we have life, we also have hope. Today you have life. Don't miss this opportunity. It could be your last one. God bless you.